Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 19-year-old male with abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. I'll go through the case briefly like this, just so you can get an overview of what we're dealing with here. And then, starting back at the top, my approach to CT abdomen and pelvis is to go through the organs in a consistent manner so that I always make sure that I have commented on everything and therefore I have looked at everything. So I would go through this and say the liver and then I go through the spleen and the pancreas. The pancreas is a little difficult to visualize here because there's such a marked paucity of fat in the abdomen even the subcutaneous fat is very, very thin. Here we can see the pancreas, the pancreatic tail, extending as it does to the splenic hilum. So liver, spleen, and pancreas. Here you can see the pancreatic head is a little bit more inferiorly positioned compared with the pancreatic tail. That's typical, but not always the case. The adrenal glands are difficult to visualize, but here's one on the right, very thin, and here's part of the adrenal gland on the left. You can see it's anteromedial and superior to the upper pole of both the right and left kidney, this being the left adrenal gland and the right adrenal gland being here. The kidneys appear unremarkable. The abdominal aorta is normal in caliber. No obvious gallbladder abnormalities are identified. So what we see then that we need to comment on is this process in the right lower quadrant and anterior portion of the pelvis. So here we have what look like inflammatory changes involving bowel in the region of the right lower quadrant. Let's look at this on the coronal images, give us a little different perspective. And here you can see on the coronal images, you have this configuration of edematous soft tissue bulging into the lower part of the right colon. So that would be exactly where I would expect the terminal ileum and ileocecal valve to be located and there is exuberant edema there and we can see that there is edematous tissue coursing up to that so I believe that this is very edematous inflamed terminal ileum and ileocecal valve and that suggests most likely Crohn's disease. In addition there are a couple of fluid collections one is here and one is here this could represent abscess formation abscess formation or fistula communicating from the inflammatory changes in the bowel to adjacent tissues. There are also some small fluid collections. Uh, you can see right here this trace fluid. This is intraperitoneal fluid. It's very subtle but it's important to be able to identify small amounts of free fluid in the pelvis. Uh, let's see if we look here. Right around here, this is some fluid. If you look at it, you can identify this is bowel, this is bowel, but this is fluid right here. It takes a while to get comfortable with that, but look at a lot of cases and you'll become comfortable with this. Here's a little bit of free fluid right here. So in summary, we have an exuberant inflammatory process in the right lower quadrant. It appears to be involving terminal ileum and ileocecal valve. This most likely represents Crohn's disease. There are a couple of fluid containing structures uh, adjacent to this inflammatory process uh, and it's not clearly identified uh, in relation to bowel itself. So these could be extraluminal collections such as abscesses 
which might reflect the formation of fistula involving the affected portion of terminal ileum. Small amount of free fluid, as we discussed a moment ago. And remember to have a good, consistent manner of going through the structures on a CT abdomen and pelvis so that you don't overlook anything. And uh, that's it for now.